A strong punishment. That is how China is characterizing its military exercises around Taiwan. It comes just three days after the country's newly elected president made a controversial inauguration speech where he vowed to keep Taiwan's democracy safe. I want to call on China to cease their political and military intimidation against Taiwan. Share with Taiwan the global responsibility of maintaining peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait as well as the greater region, and ensure the world is free from the fear of war. I will say an air exercises encircled Taiwan. China's military said that it was meant as a stern warning to its opponents seeking independence. China claims self-governed Taiwan as part of its national territory. Gordon Chang, author of The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S.-China Tech War, joins us now to talk more about China's provocations. Gordon, welcome back. Always so good to see you. Um, so what more can you tell us about today's events? Well, the Chinese exercises, this joint sword, actually not only encircled the main island of Taiwan, but also the outlying islands, which are very close to the Chinese mainland. And really what this is is a warning that China will impose an embargo. Now, it didn't really matter what William Lai said at his inauguration on Monday. The Chinese had planned this a long time. Um, but clearly, William Lai is willing to say, look, we want to talk to China. We want to maintain the status quo. But really, China is not listening. And Gordon, is there anything else that really stands out to you about today's activity? Anything particularly concerning? Well, what concerns me most is sort of a bigger picture, that Xi Jinping is not afraid of the United States, and that because of a feeble, basically feeble um, Biden policy, he sees an historic opportunity to make gains. You got to remember that President Trump in December 2016, before he took office, actually accepted a phone call from Lai's predecessor, Tsai Ing-wen. And that told the Chinese that Trump was not afraid of China. That had peace on the agenda for four years. I think that President Biden needs to call Lai himself and show the Chinese that he too is not afraid. Gordon, from a strategic standpoint, why would China perform these exercises you know, out in the open for Taiwan to see and possibly study? Well, I think that China is trying to intimidate the Taiwan population. Now, that hasn't worked for a very long time because the Taiwanese have sort of become accustomed to these provocative Chinese military maneuvers, but also it's stiffened resolve on the island. Got to remember that Lai um, is historic in the sense that this is the first time in Taiwan's democracy that the Taiwan people have elected three uh, in three straight presidential elections a person from the same party. That's the Democratic Progressive Party, which is, quote unquote, pro-independence. And we heard from the head of the Indo-Pacific Command, but what exactly is being done maybe to prevent these exercises from turning into a real invasion? Well, right now, the U.S. is pretty quiet about this. Um, that's been sort of settled U.S. policy. But I think we need to be uh, less ambiguous. We need to tell China that we are willing to defend Taiwan should China invade. If we do that, I think the Chinese back off. Gordon, almost out of time, but quickly, uh, what other stories are you following right now? Uh, the biggest flashpoint in East Asia is really not Taiwan, but is the South China Sea uh, at Scarborough Shoal, uh, Second Thomas Shoal, where the Chinese are engaging in some very, very dangerous and provocative acts, despite warnings from the Biden administration, which showing that deterrence has broken down. Well, Gordon, thank you so much for being with us and always appreciate your analysis. Thank you, Tracy.